Hello appraisers, this is Brandon with Spark for Appraisers, and in this Synapse Spotlight video, we're going to be covering actually determining what your adjustments might be and different ways you can go about doing that. So you can see right here, we're on the results screen for this session. I have uploaded three different sets of data, and I did name them so you can see. So the blue dots represent results for each of those different methods that were run on my competing properties, what I determined we're competing with my subject property, just those properties. And the green dots represent the result when I uploaded, in this case, all of the single family properties in my defined geographic boundaries for that particular neighborhood. And then the orange dots represent just those properties I'm probably going to be loading into my sales grid. Now, in this case, I used a few more than I would actually probably load into the grid. I think I had 12 in there, but they were the ones that I thought were most similar to the subject property. So those are the three data sets. And this does not mean that these are the three data sets you would use. I would definitely recommend using competing. But as far as the other two, you're kind of free to just use whatever you think works best for you. These are just what I used in this particular situation. OK, first thing is when you get to this screen, you'll see all the results and the different features that you're trying to get adjustments for. And you can there's other videos we have on removing features you don't care about, adding, using clicking add feature to add features you are trying to get an adjustment for. Um, we have videos going over how you can exclude results using these, the slider up here at the top by constraining and how that impacts the comments and what goes into your report if you'd like to. So you can check out those videos. I'll have links to them in the description below. But for now, we're just kind of going to cover different ways you can go about using Synapse to actually reconcile all these results to form an opinion of the adjustment. So let's go ahead and start with lot size. And I do recommend in general starting with lot size or GLA, and you'll see why here in a few minutes. So I'm going to go in here, and there's different ways you can do this. Again, we have other videos showing how to analyze using error scores and that kind of thing. In general, when a circle, when one of these dots has the black outline around it, that means that it has the best error score in that group. And you can see there's uh, one up here for paired sales, which is in this group, and then one down here, which is in this group group below the dashed line. Some people may want to place more weight on those. They have better error scores. Some people may may want to place more weight on where they they tend to all be grouped up. Maybe for certain situations, you might prefer just to lean more on depreciated cost or paired sales or whatever it is. So whatever works best for you. In this case, I can see the majority of the results are all grouped up right around this two to four dollar range or five dollar range and then the rest are kind of scattered about also these green dots represent a much larger set of data that isn't necessarily similar to my subject property that may be something i want to steer away from for now what i'm going to do is i'm going to go in here and get rid of all those really high results and let's face it we all have been i mean i'm sure most of you have been appraising for a very long time in general you have a good idea of at least a small range of where the adjustment might be. And in this case, I do as well. And that lines up right around where these are. So I'm going to go ahead and cut those out and snip them. And it kind of zooms in on the rest of the area. And I may also want to just exclude that really low result there. And so now I'm kind of left with this. I've got a bunch of results right around 2 to $3, and then a few that are in the 3 to 4 range. And I can see my best error scores are right these two and this one. And so in this case, what I'm going to do is lean upon my knowledge in the area where I would say it's somewhere between 2 to $4. And I'd probably call it right in the middle between the best error scores in here. So I'm going to call it right at $3. And I'm going to mark it as done. So I'm good with lot size now. Now, if I move on down the row, what I might want to do next is just look to see which of these have results that either group together that seem to be really reasonable or maybe that don't so in this case i can see for gla there is a bit of a spread but mostly it looks like they're kind of grouped right around here in the 50 to 75 dollar range and that's right what i would expect as far as what my adjustment is going to end up being so i can constrain out the really high ridiculous results and even cut them out if I want to, to kind of zoom in. And now I'm left with this. And again, you can see, I've, so I've got depreciated cost here. I usually like to place some weight on that, um, or at least a little bit more than others. And then I have my two best error scores 
are between 56 and 63. And so again, I'm probably going to not place much weight on these really high ones. And I am going to reconcile to somewhere between the depreciated cost at 66, the 63 for that best error score, and the 56. So maybe right around 60 for that one. And I can call that done. So I'm happy with that. And now I can see my full bath is kind of, I mean, it's a pretty tight range actually going from 7,000 up to about 11,000. But I'm still not sure, am I going to call it here or here? Half bath is also similar to that. And I've got a fairly big spread for my patio areas and my swimming pool especially. Although you do notice that my paired sales and the best regression all kind of fall into that twelve to $15,000. But what you might have is you might have a situation where you have a bunch of results that are kind of falling really out of whack with where you think they should be. And you can kind of see that here. So let's say my swimming pool adjustment is going to end up being around twelve to $15,000. You can see these orange dots and these green dots, which represent the different data sets, the very large data set and the one that only has 12 properties in it. They're kind of adjusting much higher than I would expect them to. So to help out in situations like that, we have built into Synapse what I believe is a very powerful feature called modeling. Now, I realize that when I say the word modeling, it may sound kind of black boxy, and this is not something you want to use because how in the world are you going to explain it to somebody or even understand what it's doing? But actually, it's really simple, and it's something you probably do in every single appraisal that you perform, and that is adjust the properties to your subject property. So just as an example, if I were to click model right now in Synapse, what it will do if I click model in, in this lot size widget here, is it's going to adjust every property that I've uploaded to Synapse to the subject property based on $3 a square foot. So it'll go in, look at every property, look at the lot size versus the subject property. It will adjust every single individual property to the subject for that lot size based on $3 a square foot. It's pretty simple and straightforward, but it's also very powerful because it basically removes lot size as a confounding or a co-varying factor that can throw off results or make results seem all over the place. It's especially helpful with regression, group data, and sensitivity. Paired sales isn't affected as greatly because paired sales already tries to find properties that are otherwise the same. So it's not as significant. However, because we're essentially eliminating lot size as a feature you need to look at once we model, because once we model, all the properties are now basically adjusted to the subject. So it's as if their lot sizes are all the same as the subject, basically. Then we can actually have another category of paired sales that we call adjusted paired sales. And it's essentially a property that wasn't a matched pair, but now it is because the lot size was different, but now it's not because we've adjusted for lot size. So now we might have more pairs show up. So you can see, for example, with garage space I'm looking at, with paired sales, I don't have a single blue dot, which are my competing properties. So let's go ahead and model lot size and see if we get any blue dots here, because I'm guessing we might. Let's go ahead and try it out. So now Synapse is recrunching everything, recalculating all the different methods. Of course, it's recalculating all the different methods other than lot size, which is already done and modeled. And because GLA was marked as done and locked, it didn't change anything here either. But it did update all the other features. And we can see that now we do have blue dots for paired sales in garage spaces. And you notice that when I hover over them, they say adjusted paired sales now. So you know this was not a true paired sale, or these actually you can see it says 64 matched pairs. You know that those 64 are adjusted paired sales. If, over here, those green dots that were there before, they say true paired sales, meaning those are properties that regardless of adjusting for anything else, they are true matched pairs. You can see it shows $4,800 and $7,300 for the results, depending on whether you look at average or median. And so now we have 64 matches, and those are properties that otherwise were not matched pairs, but now that we eliminated lot size as something we need to look at, we have 
those mashed pairs. So I may have beat that to death. Hopefully that makes sense. Let's go ahead and look at swimming pools. So this is the one we were looking at that was kind of all over the place. And you can still see we kind of have the grouping down here around 10 to 15,000. And we still have the green dots that are up higher. But if you remember, I believe this grouped data dot was up well above 50,000. And now it's down to around 40,000. And this regression dot that's green was well above 60,000, I believe. And now it's down to 46. So things are slowly starting to come in line. This one, I believe, dropped a little bit, not quite as much. So really, the more you model, it should help your results become more in line with what they are in reality, especially when we're talking about group data regression and sensitivity, and especially when we're talking about group data regression and sensitivity on data sets that are not necessarily your competing properties. Basically, the more we model, the more we're bringing that large set of data, all SFRs, which was the data I uploaded, we're basically removing those confounding factors, the things that were very different about those properties. So if there were maybe properties that were really large lots or really small lots, we've now made those more similar to the subject. So that's uh, bringing these more in line. And that should happen with any with all the sets of data that are less similar to your subject property. OK, hopefully that made sense. I realize I've talked a lot about that. But let's go ahead now and look at things. So bath adjustment, I think I was expecting this to be more around the nine to 10,000, which are these. So we probably could do that. I do see that this is still showing up a little bit low, but maybe not too low. And I do have this one showing basically zero dollars. That's the adjusted paired sales. That doesn't make sense to me. And I wouldn't rely on that. I would just exclude it. Go like this. And I can say, OK, I'm going to maybe call this 10,000 and place most weight on these four different methods here and exclude these. Also, maybe I just want to leave this and see what happens if I model GLA. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll just model GLA and we'll see what happens there. Let's go ahead and look at the rest. So half bath, I'm going to skip. And you can see there's no blue dots here, no results based on my competing properties. And that's because I don't have any competing properties that have a half bath. So I really don't need that. I could just remove it. Uh, let's see what else. So garage spaces, let's look at this one. So this, you can see they're kind of grouped up right around the seven to $9,000. And I think I want to go ahead and lock this in. I want to call this 8,000, maybe place most weight on depreciated cost, the adjusted paired sales here, and least absolute deviation regression. So yeah, let's do that. In fact, I'm going to get rid of those get rid of those and mark that as done. You can see it locks it automatically. So now if I model anything else, it will not impact this. Let's look at carport. Actually carport, I don't care about because I'm not going to, I don't have any comps that have carports. And then pool. Let's, you know what, just for the heck of it, let's go ahead and model GLA and see if it helps out with swimming pool at all. I do believe for this set of properties that I believe are a little bit lower end, it's probably going to be around 10 to 15,000. But let's go ahead and model GLA and see what happens. Now, the reason this pops up and it says, are you sure, is because I did make some changes to full bath, but I haven't locked it or said I'm done. So what it's telling me is it's going to recalculate everything and blow out what I've done so far. And that's OK. I want it to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and model and say yes. And let's see what happens. OK, so now you can see the things I had done in full bath are now gone. And now what we've got left are some very low results. And we still have depreciated costs around 9,000. I've got some true paired sales and adjusted paired sales around nine to 10,000 regression there. OK, so yeah, I think what I'm going to do is we'll disregard those, place weight on depreciated cost and paired sales here and get rid of the uh, green dot, the one that's based on all single family homes. And there we go. And so I can say my adjustment, my opinion of the adjustment for full bath is $10,000. Half bath again, let's get, we don't need it. Carport don't need. So let's look at swimming pool. Okay, so it looks like we have actually, if you remember quite a few more results for paired sales, especially now because we have adjusted paired sales. And you do want to look at these once in a while because you can see with these orange dots, there's only three matched pairs. So, I mean, 
that's enough. That's our minimum requirement for placing a result on the screen for matched pairs. We require at least three matched pairs, but it's not a lot. So just be aware of that. You maybe want to place less weight on that. We do have the adjusted paired sales on our really large set of data with 9,700 matched pairs. That's a lot. Um, it, I'm not sure if I want to place much weight on that, though. And then our competing properties, matched pairs, are right in the $12,000 range. So maybe I want to kind of place more weight on that, especially with the best error score for regression was right around 12,000 as well. That's probably what I would do. And if you'll remember, this group data dot was actually up above $50,000 before, and now it's 26,000 after modeling lot size and GLA. So it definitely helps. It definitely tightens things up. And the more you can model, as I said, hopefully the more it will help. So you add other features here like views or whatever it else, whatever else you have that you want to add, that should help tighten up the rest of the features that you haven't yet figured out. So I'm going to go ahead and do this one. I'm going to get rid of everything above 20, which are also all the the all SFR and the grid properties, none of the competing were up that high. Uh, I do think that anything below 10 is just not reasonable. So I'm really just going to look at these right here. In fact, get rid of those orange ones and really place most weight on these here. And I'm probably actually going to place most weight on the paired sales based on my competing properties and the regression based on my competing properties. Also group data and sensitivity. They all kind of line up right around here. So I'm going to call it 12,000, call it done. And anyways, that's it. So I can go ahead and do patios, but I'm just going to, it's really the same thing. So I'll leave you with that. Hopefully that's helpful. Oh, and a couple more things to point out. One is these little eyeball icons, they show up when that particular feature has been modeled on something. That way, well, one, it goes into your digital work file. All of this does, and there'll be information on all the math, but for your own purposes, being able to know, okay, what was this one modeled on again? And you can just hover over this little eyeball and it will tell you it's modeled based on lot size and GLA. That's all there just for your knowledge. So you know exactly what's going on as far as the math and what's been adjusted based on what. And remember, if you're not quite ready to actually mark something is done. So let's say I was going to do a, a carport adjustment. If I'm not quite ready to mark something is done yet, I'm still thinking about it, but I also don't if I'm going to model something, I don't want it to impact those results. I can just click lock calculations. And then if I go model anything else, it will not impact this feature. It will be stuck as modeled on lot size and GLA and will not be modeled on anything else you do in the future. Okay, I think that's it. Thanks everybody for watching.